Salutare! This is Elena with another wine adventure. My goal is to visit all the wineries in Moldova. At the moment, I have already visited eight wineries out of 34. Still a very long way to go. If you're interested in the other wineries that I've been to, feel free to go down in the description and click on the links. Now we are going to Kramomir Cherst. Um, I know very little about this winery. It's actually a quite recent one. I heard a lot of good reviews about it, so I'm very excited to go there. It's around one hour from Chisinau. One hour and 20 minutes. Okay, so one hour and 20, uh, the road is very good so far. So if you have, you know, a car and maybe you're scared about the roads in Moldova, I can tell you that the road is a dream. It's really smooth, really new. So no, uh, no problems about that. As I was telling you, I'm reviewing wineries and uh, I have a couple of criteria. So criteria number one is the winery itself, how beautiful the building is, you know, the setting, the nature, is it a good vibe, a good atmosphere there. Uh, the second thing is uh, the tour itself. If the winery offers a tour, like is it interesting? Because after the first two, three wineries, it does get repetitive. Like you keep hearing the same things, like they have the best sellers, I don't know the best building and so on, so I want to hear something really unique. And then last thing but not the least important is the wine, right? Because we are reviewing wineries, we're not going to restaurants. Is the wine good? Is it drinkable? Is it something that you can buy and maybe give to your friend's home? Uh, and obviously food, like if they have some food pairings, are, is the food in the restaurant good? We are going to arrive really soon and I'll show you more about the winery. It's so cold outside, but just wanted to tell you a couple of things about the, the winery. The winery is built in what it's called um, uh, Brinkovenesk style. This is a style that is super popular in Romania. And we have other wineries built in the same style. It's really nice. It looks very kind of classic and historic. Um, I personally love it. But let's start with the beginning. The village, Mircesh, dates back to the 14th century, which was a very long while ago. And right on the top of the hill, which is the second highest hill in Moldova, stood this mansion. The mansion served many purposes during its lifetime. Obviously, it was the home of the landlord, but it also was a kindergarten for the children in the village. As people started leaving the village during the last couple of decades, the building decayed. So in 2011, when Krama Mircesht Winery was founded, the owner took the decision to fully rebuild the mansion according to the old project. In a couple of minutes, you'll actually see what it was and what it is right now. And as of 2020, uh, the winery opened the doors of its guest house with 13 rooms and a restaurant with traditional cuisine. But the tour is starting, so let's hear a couple of words from the owner himself. Nu punem sub accent că avem citat și s-au dat prim accent pe soiul autohtone de primărână, deci avem plantat cu dească neagră, cu dească regală, cu dească albă, rară neagră, cu rică. Așa și vița de vie, cea care crește pe cernăzul, deci e cam lenșă, scurgă mari, păstari mari, frunză mari, mai pereți mai subțe, mustul, bobiță mari, deci mustul mai deluat și cea care crește pe pantă, pe solul sărace, deci Tot se întâmplă, îi se dă greu, cum s-ar spune, creștere mai lente, bolițe mai mici, mai, musc mai concentrat în arome și minerale. Și respectiv vinurile sunt diferite și cu potențialul din vechere. Din această gamă doar vinurile roșii sunt păstrate un an de zile în bătoaie vechi, pentru a se îmbogăse cu oxigen și a se înnobela, așa zis. Deci, de fapt, bătoaie astăzi nu mai este necesar la produse, pentru că este bătoaie din el. Este vasul din inox, care mai ieftin, mai practic, mai ușor de ienginizat. Bătoaie este un instrument de a face un vin bun și mai interesant. Struguri în gheață, sunt culeși în sare cei înghețate, imediat presați, cristalele de apă rămân în boabe, mustul care se obține foarte dulci și se obține un vin dulci care nemții l-au numit, l-au botezat Ice Wine. So far, it's super interesting. It's a very in-depth tour organized by the owner of the winery. So he's able to give us this amazing level of detail, answer all of our questions and tell us about the in and outs of owning a winery. Like it's a very unique and definitely a very immersive experience. 
I can't even recall all the interesting details that the owner shared with us. You really have to come here to experience this for yourself. The tour lasts as little or as long as you have questions for the owner and he can answer them. So it's really dependent on you. But for the time being, let's check the production section. The production section has a capacity of 100,000 liters. The owner actually said that he didn't have any fancy equipment, but that was okay because it could still allow them to make really high quality wine. This is how the winery used to look like before the renovation. It was a house of a very rich person in the village. Here are some more photos. The only thing that is authentic is the cellar. So it's the same cellar but extended twice. Otherwise the building was completely built from, from scratch because it was not up to standard. Um, they have a hotel inside and you know it had to correspond to some uh, standards. Let's have a look at the restaurant. It's very uh, cool, very cozy. Here they have a stand with the different wines that they sell and also things uh, made out of honey. This is probably a partner of theirs. But yeah, let's uh, look at the prices. These are the white wines from 120 to 300 lei. And these are some reds. 150 to 450 lei. This is a you know, more expensive one. So they do have a quite good range of wines from 120 to 450, which is four times more expensive. Everybody can pick up something they really like. It's a couple of days before Christmas and they have this amazingly beautiful Christmas tree with lights, a piano, uh, the restaurant is very spacious. Uh, it can easily accommodate probably around 70, 80, maybe even 90 people. They have a fireplace in the center. And uh, that's it. So up here, there are probably rooms because it's also a hotel with uh, 13 rooms from what I heard. Maybe we can have a look at it later. Let's have a look at their menu because I'm famished. I only had a croissant in the morning and that's it. Um, the menu is pretty small, which is a thing that I like. I think you cannot be good at, you know, at pizza and sushi and everything. So they have a small menu, uh, mostly with an accent on traditional dishes. So I see a lot of Moldovan foods. I'm gonna go with the mini chicken with garlic sauce. This is something that was recommended by the owner. And uh, my friend, she went with um, a pork stew with polenta, sheep cheese and sour cream. That's the famed uh, tokanitsa ku mamaliga. While we are waiting for our mains, we decided to get some spreads. This is a tuna spread and this is liver. Maybe we are super hungry again, but I uh, do think this is a really nice appetizer. I'm having a wine tasting consisting of five wines. At the moment, I'm at wine number two. This is a 2021 Riesling. It's one of the most delicious and unusual Rieslings that I've ever had. It's very crisp. It almost feels like apple juice, green apple juice. It's so refreshing, so zingy, so crisp. Um, the owner, uh, who is also the one serving me wine for the wine tasting, said that this is a style that is very similar to the uh, Riesling style in Germany. But this is the first time that I'm having it. You don't always find owners who are willing to invest their time to talk with, uh, with the guests and to tell them more about the wine, to educate them in a way. Um, so, so far the experience has been really nice in this way. Oh, look at the color. It's orange, golden, orange wine. This is a white wine that, when it's fermented, is fermented with fruit and the skin. And it has this golden smell. Uh, that's the best way of describing it. 
It's, it smells of honey and has this sweet aroma. Mm. When you taste it, it's very fresh and crisp and it almost tastes like water, but in a good way. So it's a, such an unusual style of wine. Let me just show you the color. It, it has this golden gold liquid color. I'm trying this Kukoshel Kumoshte, which is basically a small rooster with moshte. This is a sauce made of garlic, a traditional one in Moldova. And let me just show you how the rooster looks like. When it's spread flat like a tobacco leaf, uh, hence the name, it's really juicy. One problem that I have with chickens or like quail is that it's sometimes dry, but this one, especially dipped in the garlic sauce, mm, it's really juicy well-made, crispy on the outside. Mm, it's a really good chicken. Vegetables are also good. A bit oily for me, like uh, especially the eggplant has a <laughs> fair amount of oil, but otherwise really delicious. And Elena had the traditional dish, Mamelik Kubrinza and Takane. Let's see what's the damage. Um, so the appetizer 70 lei. Uh, Elena's portion 130, mine 180 plus uh, 60 because I had the vegetables. And then the tour is 350 lei per person. The total bill is 790 lei. Let's have a look at one of their rooms because maybe some of you will want to stay the night. So here's a table, a desk for work can be used for remote work. And here is the king size bed. Two bedside tables, a very modern open wardrobe, a mirror, and an amazing balcony. Obviously it's super cold outside right now, so I'm not gonna go outside, but you can just imagine how fancy it is in spring or summer or fall. Ooh. Look at the ceilings. So it's a very nice combination of old, as represented by the wood and the stone, and also new with the glass and metal. Um, very excited. Let's have a look at the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, a modern bathroom with an open walk-in shower. Really fancy toilet, sink, this uh, brick wall, very modern. What can I say? I would gladly stay here because this looks pretty fancy in, in a good way. So that's it guys, I want to share my final thoughts on the winery. In my background is a very old meteorological station that is here very close to the winery. So in terms of the winery itself, I think it's a really nice, charming, cozy building. Uh, I wouldn't say like it's the best of the best, but it definitely has like this sort of charm. Um, it, it's a nice place to uh, spend your time. Uh, I really like the wine, so I would say like the wines is 4, 4.5 out of 5 in my book. They were really, really good. Uh, the food was good, uh, so we had a different experience. I really like my food. Now my friend, she had, you know, a mixed experience with her food. That's why I would rate a food probably at somewhere like 4. Uh, out of five they have amazing rooms for you to stay in so uh, if you plan to uh, spend there a couple of days maybe an extended weekend i think that's a great place because they have a really nice uh, combination of modern and traditional um what else did i did i forget oh yeah the tour <laughs> the most interesting part um, what I liked about the tour is that it's very authentic. It has the owner giving you the tour and telling you the inside out of the wine business. It was definitely less sort of showy and more authentic. If you're into that kind of stuff that's right up your alley, I would rate the tour at uh, 4.5. 4 I really enjoyed it because the owner was very authentic and he really told us things about the winery. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. 
So that's inside of the sphere that you saw from the outside. It has this amazing and really creepy echo. I can hear my voice a couple of times after I say things. Um, besides the fact that there's a meteorological station, it's really hard to imagine what they were exactly using it for, but it's such a quirky and strange uh, structure. Yeah, if you're here in, uh, in the proximity of uh, this station, I definitely recommend you visit this one because it's just so unusual.